Monday, everybody. It's June twentieth. Yo, happy birthday, Bryce! Thank that you. Was, uh, that was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yeah. I'm just saying that, that was yesterday. It was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can make it go a whole week, but uh, oh yeah. Well, we, yeah, we didn't have a show yesterday. <laughs> uh, hello. Everybody. Well, you know, my, my my father's birthday is tomorrow. Enough with him. <laughs> What a what a looky loo! What a what a, <laughs> what, a, what, a, what, a what a Bryce a wannabe! I know, yeah. Jeez, my birthday is two days after Bryce's. <laughs> I mean, he uh, did have guy. it about twenty years before me, this but yeah. Guy. <laughs> twenty years ago. <laughs> was, was your dad about twenty when he had you? Uh, no, he probably was mm, thir- in his thirties, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a good. I don't. I don't. Good exactly. thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> also, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm just asking yeah. for a friend. Does, you if know, you maybe. were going on a vacation, would you like the <laughs> hiking <laughs> city? I think. Also, he's... what's your favorite movie? <laughs> and your first three pets' names? I think he would have been 30, 36? I guess he would have been thirty-six when he had me. Wow. So, no, no, not quite, not quite twenty years. Uh, hello, everybody. We'll do weird things in a minute. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is the podcast all about weird stuff. We're going to get started in just a minute. We're doing some last minute stuff. Yeah. Don't you love doing last minute stuff, y'all? I love it, dude. Well, I, I think it's a great. I love last great... minute stuff, but I never know when to do it. <laughs> first, first thing in the morning? Uh huh. Well, did you be... not get all your dad jokes out on Father's Day? <laughs> <laughs> I am sufficiently chastened and will be. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't. I'm not up with this dad joke shaming. Okay. You know, why have we turned somebody the pleasant personality who wants to lighten the room and make everybody happy? Why are we now? Oh, a dad joke. Like, like, not a dad. So any joke I just say is just lame. But I just feel like. <laughs> Yeah. Is, oh, dad. Like, yeah. Oh, f that guy for trying to, you know, have fun. Would you? It feels like. Would you think it's better if you got a dad joke instead of someone just booing you? <laughs> <laughs> like, so if you haven't just, reproduced, then you just get booed. Boo! boo! <sighs> yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? See, it would be nice to well, it's, somebody. It's, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's okay, boomer. It's like, okay, boomer. It, to me, it yeah. really comes from that okay, boomer, like, oh, these olds. Oh, you know, it's like. Dad jokes to me, uh, uh, I, had, I had always understood them to be uh, more of a call coming from the inside. Like, 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 like dads liked making dad jokes. I, I had always thought that that was more of their word. <laughs> well, I don't know. Some of them take pleasure in it. <laughs> then let them be the ones to use it. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Fair point. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, just, I just, I see, I just see it from like, I'm like, because I'm like, man, like, like the, the shaming of the American father figure. Like, like oh, now you bring levity to the situation. <laughs> yeah. In USA Today, the, the, yeah, the shrinking of father. The, the shape, yeah, uh, 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 father smallest. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's do the Weird Things podcast. How about we do that? Ready. I'll count you in, Andrew. Yeah. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, it's time to think big, real big. Okay. Finally, I'm tired of thinking small. I used to think. I used to think small. I know what you're gonna say. How big will the pie be when Brian's face goes in it? 
Well, to recap Delicious. um last week's episode, uh Brian and Andrew are usually the, the two very agreeable chaps on everything. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh we, we made a friendly challenge that both Brian and I want to see succeed, but the Indeed. challenge was when will we see SpaceX Starship uh be reused, not just go into orbit, but right. actually the successfully same ship land going. after a second use. Yeah. And uh Neither one of us has any idea when this will really happen. Nope. But we decided but, but that to. It, I, I, it does not stop the smack talk from beginning fast and loud. Yeah. I, I, it is, I have waited several years to watch Starship go orbital, as has a lot of SpaceX fans. But also, I'm waiting. We're all waiting for, yeah, a first fully reusable spaceship that's going to transform and change space forever. So it's like, you know. Oh, it's five years too late. Fail. No, that that's not really. It's 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 five years. If it's five years too late, it's still going to be thirty years too soon compared to what people were expecting. So, right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. So after, right after we oh, made wait, wait, the did, bet. Yeah. Did, did we say what the bet was? That uh, it was uh, end of this year. Yeah. But uh, uh, though uh, I'm not going to use it right, but the line is by the end of this year whether or not. Uh, a second, the second one touches down, or no, the, the, the second one, launch second of journey. the same piece right. of equipment touches, touches down. down safely. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if if uh, it happens before the end of the year, then I take a pie in the face and I donate five hundred dollars to World Builders. And if uh, if it happens after, then uh, uh, Andrew takes a pie in the face and donates five hundred dollars to the charity of his choice. There we go. Oh, we don't donate to the others too. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I was way. thinking it was. I yeah, thought about that. I'm I'm totally comfortable either way. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, you're no, yeah, you're gonna good. force Andrew to 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 peel off five hundred dollars <laughs> to, to his favorite to, charity. No, to world builders, <laughs> and, it, and he'll be he'll be oh I'm so upset the entire way. And yeah. If you lose, okay. then you yeah. have to to do it to a charity. Yeah, that's job. better. That's better. Yeah. So we don't know. Uh, there has not been a last week a launch and relaunch of a starship, but. Uh, there is still this, they got what's called this, this we talked about before, the FAA gave them what's called a FONSI, a finding of no significant impact, but it's also mm -hmm. kind of a cool name. Yep. There's about 70 Sit things that SpaceX has to address, but there are things like providing lighting and stuff like this. They seem probably very doable, but also one of us like, prepare a report on like the indigenous people's history of that area. <laughs> We're like, it's a book report? Like literally one of the things I have to do is a book report? But anyhow, um, I mean, Elon, uh, yeah, yeah, hey, let's not blow this off. That's uh, book reports, big pains in the butts. True that, true that. So Elon tweeted literally like an hour or two after we made our bet, said, hey, uh, we are ready. We'll be, we should be ready to launch by next month, by July. Ready to launch isn't the same as launching. Uh, no. Look, but. Andrew, it's not like days after that, they landed three first stages in one day. <laughs> Yeah, it was 37 hours, but yes, okay. they did, they did, they did, yeah, SpaceX, as you don't know, they managed to pull off, like, three missions all at once, and with, like, with a span of, like, 37 hours, landing three rockets back on Earth. Um, it's, it's not looking good for Brian, is all I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. There, There's going to be the, I highly, highly, highly recommend and when I say I highly recommend, I, there is Everyday Astronaut has several interviews with Elon Musk where he walks around the facility at Starbase and talks about it. It is fascinating to see this, this facility being built. It is also fascinating insight into, albeit a very controversial man, the world's richest man and the most successful tech mogul ever. And when he talks and says things, there's either things that are interesting about what he has to tell you or observationally of what he feels is important. And yeah. it's just, you know, I, it is really, I've wrote down, it's one of the things I just started writing down things he'd said and going, oh man, that's very, very insightful or very this, whatever. And again, uh, I'm not telling you to go take a class from him on, you know, online media etiquette. Uh, hmm. I am hmm. saying, you know, the guy that built, you know, built SpaceX and took Tesla to where it is today kind of probably knows yeah if if, if if you if you care about this boy uh, uh, uh there are only a few people that are leading the vanguard on on space explore, uh, space exploration if and electric you cars care so. about building things or building companies 
I'm like, literally anybody has anybody, any interest in making a thing or working with a team. I'm like, that's, this is literally because that is, these things happen because of teams. These things happen because of teams. It is a team at SpaceX, team at Tesla. There are teams of people working on this stuff. And to get those people together, there are brilliant people at other companies. There are brilliant people all over. They're brilliant entrepreneurs. But somehow to get these teams, the ability to do what they want to do, it, it's just, there is a lot of a process back and forth. But anyhow, uh, he had tweeted out like, yeah, it's July. They planned it. That's when they, they hope to. There is a lot of videos like you can watch live footage. If you go to Lab Padre right now on YouTube, you can actually see multiple camera shots from across the street or from across the bay showing you in progress. These things as are being assembled, stuff put on launch mounts. You look at we looked at before the scale of this. It's incredible. They're building a simultaneous launch system and rocket factory in Cape Canaveral right now, too. Basically trying to ensure that they have this production. Gwen Shotwell, who is the president of SpaceX, and she deserves a tremendous amount of credit for keeping this company in the direction it's been going. And just uh, she really is, in, you know, absolutely integral to the success of SpaceX. She was just in an interview and she talked about what the goal was for Starship. Uh, anybody want to hear the production goals? Uh, oh, for how many and how fast they're going to build them? Yeah. Oh, yes. But first, I want to take a guess. Uh, I would say two in the next year, and then four, 10, 20. So they're probably right now already at like a monthly cadence. What? And their goal is to get to one per day. Wait, building one full rocket per day? One Not launching, day. building. Not launching, building. Building, build. building yeah. Well, probably presumably launching so they don't well, have them at the same time, yeah. Up. But also so building them one per day. Yeah, because they'll have their starship and there's boosters. So they're always going to be building more starships than boosters because you can stack a starship on a booster, but that is the goal. They want to be building the whole we want to colonize Mars thing. Not a joke. Yeah. It is not it is a real it is a real that is that is if when I really I invite watch these videos and watch the scale of production already. It is the biggest story that's happening right in front of everybody where literally he's building his star bases for building the fleet to go to Mars. And wow. I mean, I guess once you have it down and once it works, I mean, uh, I wouldn't freak out to find out that Boeing builds, you know, a plane a day. No, they don't. I don't know. Yeah, the total, yeah, it's not they're not it's not 24 hours to build a rocket, everybody. But it's, no, no, it no, no. Like but, having, but yeah, you know what you I mean? Like, like yeah, you yeah, have yeah, a, a line you know, happening and yeah. Yeah, exactly. They'll put yeah. one one per day coming off the construction line, but uh, production line. So uh, I don't know what the total number of Boeing airplanes like. I don't know. Let's look that up. How many Boeing airplanes they make <laughs> per day? But uh, that is in your and you're you're thinking like, what what would you use it for? I'm like, well, that's. That's like, what would you use all these computers for? Who needs right. computers? You know, that's I can't little... imagine a reason that somebody would need need a mainframe in their pocket. Yeah, therefore, <laughs> when and and part of it is like, uh, I was watching for all mankind. Oh, dude, dude, season. we have an answer. Uh, you want to lock in your guest yeah. from Boeing? Uh, one every four days, Bryce. Uh, per Abdullah Gook on Quora, according to the official website of Boeing, they delivered 806 planes in 2018, which is a rate of 2.2 planes per day. Insane. Wow. So, and yeah. That's pre-COVID numbers. Wow. 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 Uh, so that's a pretty, that shows you a lot of demand for airplanes and then you look because you have planes retiring. But anyhow, um, I watch For All Mankind and like the season one, I think it's a really well done show, but it is still one of these shows that's still stuck in the, ah, oh, the future is just a bigger version of the present sort of idea. And again, their version of the future in season three is 1992, but they have, you know, this entrepreneurs built this big, huge space hotel. They built, they, oh, we built this big, huge space hotel. And it's like, when you have that much capacity in orbit, charging people, $20,000 per night, $30,000 per night. That is the worst use of <laughs> that possible. It is, it is a, it's, you know, let's make, you know, let's take microchips and, you know, not use them in the most for, you know, it's, it literally, it's but, the amount of, but, 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 sorry, but it is, but it is the easiest concrete 
idea that everybody, even a child, can understand. It was, and, and, and the and, night on and Mars. It was a a mainstream idea, I think, before the I before we, we really wrapped our head around how, exactly how, how accessible space was when you had reusable rockets. Well, like that, that was, I, that, I heard I heard smart people say things like space tourism is the future of space. I heard people who weren't very good at economics say that. I would, I, you know, I heard people who were, who didn't really understand, you know, where, where the real money is, it's industrial capability, things like this. And so if you look at, in any economic system, the lowest tier is going to basically be tourism, right? Yeah. Tourism is the lowest tier, highest tiers, information systems, things like this. So when you start talking about, when you look at like, look like, oh, wow, man, too bad we couldn't build a billion dollar fiber optic cable assembly, you know, generated facility, like the, the amount of money that is willing to be spent to do things like semiconductor production, things like this is phenomenal. When you're spending billions of dollars in building microprocessor plants, things like this, that's where uh, tours will be part of it, but the real money is going to be in production and information systems. Like that's creating that stuff. That's my take on it because the tourism sort of economy is gonna be very small. And we've seen this too, with some of these space tourism companies, they, the, the, drop off in interest level starts to decline considerably because the price is so high. But if you start looking at where the interest is in putting electronics and systems and manufacturing, all this sort of stuff in a space, it's huge, huge. So anyhow, it's like, to me, it's like, oh, computer, well, we'll use it to recipes. It's like, that is the least interesting use to this system. And it's the least efficient when it comes to making money. In my opinion. Agreed. Yeah. It is my opinion. Um, no, no, no. I, 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 I guess the problem is like all I want to do is speculate on w once, once it's cheap to get out of the gravity well, uh, what practical things will happen. But I'm, I'm trapped in 1975, and the internet's a thing, but nobody can envision all the things that the internet is going to be. You know. Uh, much less what happens when there are net, uh, network effects where the more space stations there are, the more valuable it is to go have a sp space station and so on. Yeah, I think there's going to be space hotels. things. I think we'll see it early on, but I just like for the real, the, the really long-term, like I think viable stuff, it's going to be, you're going to, you're going to be putting money up there because it's going to make more, you more money back. You know, like if you could, if I do, I want to spend you know five hundred thousand dollars to spend a night in a hotel, or do I want to spend you know three million dollars to send a researcher up there with a bunch of test tubes and samples and stuff and do these experiments? Because that's the thing that's understood is is really undersold as people like how microgravity is so different when it comes to chemistry and physics, right? And I think that's the story that I'd love to see people understand more, like how how fascinating how many potentials are because like just a pharmaceutical company in one space station who knows what they could create well and and once it becomes truly affordably cheap to uh let's say let's say in 10 years we have what one a day 300 uh, 3000 we have 3000 of these reusable spaceships suddenly crazy ideas like um there there's a lagrange point towards the sun right mm -hmm. so suddenly giant solar foils um, basically a global sunshade and, and, and we suddenly with the snap of the fingers have a thermostat for the planet. Like that doesn't, that becomes not a, a non-zero reality in my lifetime before I die. I, I, I mean, physically, yeah, but just, but, but certainly there'll be more efficient, smarter ways to, well, but we'd never what if what, we if, what never... if what if what if we put four space hotels there <laughs> that's saying, a lot like, of real all estate of a sudden, hey, just for some hey, hey, gonna, hey. we would never never agree to that because you know parts of canada are like hey we're cold enough we don't we don't want to be any colder why are you doing this and so like the culture world wise it's like i just my personal take, I could never see that happening. Uh, oh. I'll give him a bunch of pocket warmers. Well, well, and, and that that's, uh, uh, I mentioned it before, but Neil Stevenson's latest is about one crazy billionaire who doesn't wait for permission and just shoots yeah. sulfur dioxide. So likewise, in a world, somebody maybe owns a fleet of 20, 30 of these uh, ships, doesn't ask permission, just says, nope, 
too hot. I feel like Consider that would, you would be a, uh, um, oh, what's the word? Terrorist. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, that like, was yeah, I feel like, yeah, you'd be, you'd be literally Osama bin Laden. Uh, you would be like, the bad guy in a lot of Simpsons cars. Nobody chooses to take the route of the terrorist. Nope. Yeah, and there's stuff on the sulfur dioxide that that may actually make things worse. That was like, there's like, oh, let's dump rust into the ocean because it'll increase algae blooms, which maybe, but like, it's like, yeah, it could, could, maybe. I just kind of hard to sneaky, <laughs> sneakily go do that. But I have a big project, very, very big, ambitious project. That we're going to share with you after this message. Mm, and that message is from Clorox. Clorox, <laughs> you know that uh, we got bought by a new company called Patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah, they're going to, it's a clean slate initiative. Uh, yep. Whatever you thought of Clorox before, now think of the wonderful weird stories from weird things. Mm -hmm. Patreon.com slash weird things is quick and easy. Uh, no muss, <laughs> no fuss. Just head on over to Patreon.com slash weird things and enter money. Uh, uh, you get the self satisfaction of. Not only supporting this podcast, but also a clean house for the mister. Certified bacteria free. Patreon.com slash weird things. Also get after things before anyone else. So there is a proposal. If you want to really observe planets, you really want to see things far out in space. You need a lens. You need a really big lens. You looked at the size of the James Webb Space Telescope, which uh, is still find it hard to believe that's actually out in space. Do it what it's supposed to be doing. That it worked. After what, yeah, what was decade. it? Three hundred and seventy-two points of failure, or some something. Yep, yep. Uh, but it's there, and when we start talking about massive amounts of capacity for going to space, uh, some astronomers have a really cool suggestion. They're like, "Hey, we got an idea for a lens, a really big lens." Go on. Okay. The problem is, is you got to put this thing far out of the edge of the solar system so you can use the sun. To, it's Bryce found it. Use the sun. The sun bends light around it. To use the sun as a gravitational lens. Okay, so the gizmo goes out to the edge of our solar system, looks faces towards our sun, but is really looking past our sun using our own sun as a magnifier for whatever is way the hell past the sun. Yep. Yep. That yep. is amazing. And the Bryce, if you pull that back up again, again, kudos to Bryce, everybody. Like, I'll be like, I'll get like a word like there, and then all of a sudden, be the article will pop up. Um, <laughs> he's like, incredible. he's like an open AI prompt. <laughs> yeah, this, this, uh, uh, with a higher rate of accuracy. <laughs> uh, this is amazing, and like, if you look at the resolution, they're talking about like, oh yeah, we might be able to see like planets and continents and features and the amount of details they think they'd be able to uh, pick up from other places is just incredible because the idea of just all that light coming in from the sun which is last i checked very big and then being bent around and toward the circle and then being able to use that and reconstruct what it's looking what's directly behind it uh so to visualize it and uh, our, our friend uh brent hughes did a wonderful video on uh, gravitation gravitational lensing uh, where um, they right, you, uh, you see what's called uh, Einstein's cross. It looks like four different copies of a quasar. They're all the same quasar, and they were able to actually see a single supernova uh, show up four times uh, at, uh, uh, on all four sides of the cross. But an experiment is uh, picture a wine glass, break off the top part, the bowl part of the wine glass, so you only have the stem and the base. Um, and when you do that, uh, you can move it over and it really is like a giant magnifying glass. Now it distorts it heavily because you're going to see it. Uh, if you put a dot, let's say a dot representing a planet, it's going to be distorted as, uh, just a ring, but, uh, that ain't nothing that a computer can't put back together. Yeah. I think it's time to start thinking about big projects like this. The, the, the we're, we've talked about this before. End of this decade, potentially fusion. I know this will be the decade, folks. This will be the decade for fusion. I mean, the, the uh, joke is robots with the joke is within 30 years, although this it does really seem to be only 30 years away now. If it's possible, eventually it's right. So, fusion autonomous robots that are able to do things more efficiently than people when it comes to physical labor, things like that. Uh, 
AGI, some form of AGI, some form of super intelligent systems, uh, fully reusable rockets. It's four things. Could happen by the end of the decade. If all four hit, uh, buckle up. Jackpot. The, Bingo. The, uh, <laughs> then, then my DraftKings bet comes in. Yes. <laughs> and I get. Yeah, why don't we get, get sponsored by DraftKings? Thousand to one odds. Bets. I think it's the state that we're in. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, yeah, it's just a state interesting of not about, getting like, that money. <laughs> do we do we need to really just start thinking so much bigger now? Do we need to think about bigger? And uh, you know, there are challenges on Earth, but one of the ways that you solve a present challenge is often by focusing on bigger goals, and then you realize that oh, you know, by doing this, we we figured out how to do that. You know, we we ended up with you know, electric cars are pretty darn good now. You know, they're really good, and this came about because. We wanted smaller cell phones, and that put billions of dollars into developing better battery technology. And in a market system, which is really the way to do it, because we're like, ah, oh, we should just put billions on battery tech. Well, it's hard, because we tried that. We tried that for decades, but it really took a market system where the winners and losers are predicted by actually quality of product and not by who had the best lobbyist to get funding or to be able to direct it that their way. So... Uh, you know. It'll be interesting. Uh, I, I read an article in Wired, I believe, um, talking about how uh, the uh, the Large Hadron Super Collider, uh, you know, was on a quest to find the Higgs boson, and then they're like, after that, we'll find so much more stuff. And number one, they found the Higgs boson much earlier than expected because it had less mass than predicted, and now there's kind of this like. Well, what else is there? And and it's awful quiet. <laughs> and so and so, uh, uh, this opens up a new realm of possibility for like really really big uh, ideas. Like I mean, once the gravity well is not a problem, then all of a sudden you know a ring of you know, uh, if if the James Webb telescope worked, uh, imagine a ring the size of the orbit of Earth, the orbit of Earth around the sun. You know, just a a whole bunch of them making the entire solar system into one gigantic telescope. I mean, uh, there's there's yeah. there's a lot more to figure out. I I think that uh, there is a a really good um, there's a YouTube channel called Cold Fusion, and the guy that does it is actually an astronomer and uh, a great presenter. And he has his latest video this week is revisiting the Wow signal forty five years later. Yeah, the Wow that- signal. Go ahead, oh, 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 I, I was, uh, yeah. uh, I always like to jump in and say what little I know before you expound on it. But, the, uh, but this is the, uh, uh, I, I think it was Drake uh, of the Drake equation mm-hmm. who was started mo- at the bottom, <laughs> was monitoring and, and he got one spike and, and marked it and wrote the word wow. And it turned out to be an aberration, but it sparked this, this brief moment of like, OMG, are we getting a howdy from another civilization? Yeah, it wasn't Drake, but uh, it was actually a guy named uh, Jerry Eamon. Uh, but mm-hmm. yes, it was basically they're looking at the Big Ear Telescope, which I think was Ohio State, uh, Ohio State University Big Ear Radio Telescope. And basically they would print out all the stuff onto the sheets of all the little radio signals. And then as you said, you know, he's going through this thing, looking through there and sees the signal that was in very close to this magic frequency band, it's it's the, basically like the frequency of hydrogen. And so that's a thing where like, if you were to look for somebody who's trying to talk to somebody else that would probably be in this channel, it was way stronger signal than the noise. It was way, it was just so much stronger. 45 years later to this day, it's still our single best candidate for an alien signal. It's never been repeated and we don't know what the entirety of the signal was. And also they weren't looking for modulations. So we don't know if there was something encoded in it because a telescope at that time couldn't pick this up. So all it just picked up was this big overall signal. So if there had been a message in there like, hey, warning, doom, we wouldn't know. Now, the frustrating thing about it, and it's really hard because it it shows you sort of the frontiers of sort of this sort of area of science is that in science, you need repeatability because it's never been repeated. You know, people like, well, if it was a repeating thing on a regular cadence, we should have, we probably... You know, we, we probably should have heard it by now, but we haven't, which maybe suggests that, you know, then they go like, and it suggests what? I'm like, I mean, all you know is that we didn't hear that, that if you're, you're trying to narrow the prediction down to, well, if it's a repeating beacon and we haven't heard it since then, 
then maybe it's not actually a repeating beacon. Like, no, like maybe it's like what we did when we take our radio telescopes and we aim it at different parts of the sky and then we're one and done. And like, that's the thing that like, I remember the guy does a really good analysis and says like, hey, but it may be kind of a, maybe doomed for the signal. I'm like, well, no, it doesn't change the fact that the signal happened. It's just our, our idea that it's this continuous beacon aimed at us when we don't even do that. Well, and uh, man, to, I, there was some program I saw as a kid in the 80s where they represented it really simple. Imagine two walkie-talkies. They only have channel A and channel B. Neither of you, even though you could see each other on mountaintops, uh, are able to establish any kind of preset protocol. You just have to see if you can catch the other on the right channel. Like that alone, I can imagine going hours before finally we're both at the same place at the same time. Now imagine well, at galactic and, scales and yeah. And, comp and complicate even further, imagine that it's a line of, it's a, it's a directional antenna and you don't know what mountaintop the person's on. And yeah, so we're, you're just we're, gonna try every mountaintop and <laughs> nope, didn't hear anything. All right, later losers, bye. Yeah. No, and we don't even know what part of we the, the area of the sky this came from is humongous too. So there's like millions of potential stars. So like we don't even know where it could and it, that's assuming it came from a star because a lot you find out a lot of assumptions like, well, we went to look for things that could harbor Earth like planets. Like, wait a second, like if I'm really advanced and I'm sending signals, I'm not doing it from my home. Yeah. You know, I'm doing it from some other solar system. Calling from a case, pay phone. You know, you're, yeah, you're jerks. Burner. Exactly. Exactly. I, we need burner galaxies <laughs> where it's just oh. like a new star who dis. Maybe they already have them. That's that's exactly yeah. it, yeah. right? No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't see it because it just looks like an empty galaxy, but they actually got it from Walmart up at the mm -hmm. cricket uh, track, the cricket aisle. Track, track galaxy. The track galaxy, right. And uh that's they're that's keep, what they're keeping what, it hidden from that's us. That's what every supernova is is a drug dealer breaking a star and throwing it in the trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this one's burnt. <laughs> Snap. So in 2012, on the 35th anniversary of the Wow Signal, Aristibo oh, oh. beamed a digital stream towards Hipparchus 34511, 33277, and 43587. I love the fact that like some of these places, which could actually have like highly advanced civilizations, more sophisticated than our elves, are just some number. Yeah. You know, uh, the transmission consisted of approximately 10,000 Twitter messages solicited for the purposes by the National Geographic Channel bearing the hashtag chasing UFOs. Oh my uh, God. No. Whoa, it why is. are we, why are we spamming? That's offensive. <laughs> to who? To the aliens well, getting this. Oh, okay. like, like, yeah. We're going to put Ray-Ban sunglasses. We're here for your Ray Ban exactly. sunglasses. They sound really awesome. <laughs> and beyond that, like uh, uh, I'm with you, Andrew. We name every stupid hurricane that lasts for two seconds. We can't peel off a few uh, a few names for these pl places that might uh, 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 totally reshape the concept of uh, yeah, galactic in, in life. Defense, in defense of the legit field of astronomy, as opposed to our illegitimate field of dumb speculation. There are billions of objects, so naming them probably does get tedious after a while. There's like a billion spellings of Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Just that's all we get. Whatever. Like, Whatever. we can figure it out. There's an S in there. There's probably a C. There's definitely going to be an A. Yeah, no, it's like... like oh, well, at, at the very least... Ima uh, imagine how much better the movies would be. Uh, uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, uh, there's an urgent uh, uh, warning. We've gotten a message from... Jessica with two Y's. See, okay, now here, yeah, I, I, <laughs> the middle step is uh, we're all worried about NASA funding. Let pep, let Wow Brands go nutty. It's like, sir, we've got a signal from Cool Ranch Doritos yeah. flavored gum. There we go. From extra, extra, extra double mint pleasure. Yeah, double your boosters. They say surrender, and we say. <laughs> The flavor? the flavor? Never. <laughs> now we're just doing an Austin Powers intro. <laughs> so I found a pretty interesting cha uh, channel. Of course, it's hard to find because for some reason on the desktop, uh, on the browser, YouTube, like, throws all of my subscription channels in some random order. I'm like, like I'm going to make you hunt for it. There's a channel called uh, SEA, uh, SEA Media. And what they do is they do these really kind of interesting deep dives into different like galaxies and talks about stuff. It's like the latest one is a tour of the Triangulum Galaxy. 
You like the Triangulum Galaxy, Andrew. Uh, oh yeah, that cla that that great galaxy. Well, it actually is pretty cool because we've got a bunch of neighbor galaxies in our local group, and the Triangulum Galaxy is one of them. And you just start to think about, you know, this is actually there's there's like you know like Andromeda is actually like a small galaxy between us and Andromeda. There's a lot of these things out there, and we're we just think of our own galaxy. We're like, oh wow, that's so huge. Like, oh yeah, no, that's just one galaxy out of billions or trillions. Yeah. Imagine. Okay, uh, a galaxy, okay, um, we can see supernovae from other galaxies, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and there's, uh, I, I forget the designation specifically, but like type one, type two, type three civilizations. Let's say we've hit the, the boss level of civilizations, enough to know that, that there's nothing in our galaxies. And we've thrown out uh, seed, uh, fleets to other galaxies that we know in a bazillion years will uh, auto AI will land or whatever. But basically it's like, we are leaving this galaxy. Uh, we build a bunch of Dyson spheres around all the planets and then, and then maybe just leave it as a beacon with a repeating message of an encyclopedia Galactica it, uh, until, until it breaks. <laughs> Build your spheres around the sun instead. We effed up. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. But I mean, around every individual star, right? So, so essentially, yeah, yeah. They, star. You said around every. I knew you what you meant, but you said every planet. I know you oh, know what sorry. it is. But I was just sorry. Like, yeah, 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 like, planet, like yeah. we screwed up. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> It's like it's like we lined up all our penguins and had them blink. And like, why did you yeah. do that? You're like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I knew but, you but, knew what you're saying, but I was just funny because right. It, but it basically, was the leave <laughs> the galaxy and leave it uh, as a constantly running, uh, you know, Morse code generating uh, lights on, lights off uh, for every single star. I don't know. Uh, that seems like yeah, such a good I, idea and so possible that it kind of makes me want to look for it. I, I'm now describing what if it's SETI. <laughs> What if it's what if it's like an Airbnb and we're actually some higher dimensional transient life that decided we're gonna rent it for a while? Hell yeah. Oh no, I hope there's not a cleaning fee. <laughs> <laughs> because we made we uh, don't made a mess we of it. We made a mess of it. <laughs> uh hey, uh speaking of, hmm? uh let's talk about the dead bodies floating around. Um I'm glad somebody brought it up. Shouts out to two legends, Voyager One and Voyager Two, powering down uh, this week. Initial phases of, 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 of powering down. Uh, the original, they are, uh, I didn't know they were two exactly identical copies of each other. And I didn't know that part of the space race to get the Voyager probes out was because they figured out that only during the 1970s and early 80s, we would have uh, our four biggest planets all lined up. The line for, uh, yeah. In order to basically give this uh, a 30 year journey would become a 14 year journey or what have you. Um, and, uh, also, uh, the, the original mission was meant for four years and now it's been 44 years and they're, uh, as we understand it outside of the solar system. And so now it's like, all right, start powering down these systems so we can at least still hear you beeping as, as you go out. But it's like, we're like, we're, we're, the, 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 Quite possibly the single greatest success story in the history of the space program. I, it is, it is absolutely an amazing achievement and something that we it it's hard to sort of wrap our head around the idea that right now, beyond the outer edges of you know, you know, past the Oort cloud or the, the Carmen line. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we hope that's past oh, wait, the Carmen. Yeah, line. no wait. The uh, Carmen yeah. line is definitely here on Earth. Uh, if everyone yeah. listening, Brian knows this stuff, so it's why I tease him. <laughs> I know, because I know, I know, I know, I know. But 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 I know it just well enough. It's like it's like it's like the kid at the spelling bee who's proud he remembers all twenty six letters. I know. Jeez, <laughs> you idiot, Brian. Wow, what a moron. What a maroon. Am I right, everybody? Jeez, everyone yeah. knows this. <laughs> this is easy. Easy peasy, not like you dummy. <laughs> no, 
what, we what, all laugh what, what, <laughs> what together is, in unity because we all know this. What is the line of the <laughs> carbon line? No, that's the <laughs> pause. Heliopause. Heliopause. That's what it was. Yeah. So close. Duh. I mean, joy, sometimes obviously. I get so excited Double I joy. shout out the wrong name. She doesn't like that. <laughs> old old Mistress Saul. Old, old Carmen San Diego. <laughs> so we have the and of specific capabilities for Voyager 1. Uh, uh-huh. The uh, We have like things, things to look for in old age as your space probe. Uh, termination of ultraviolet spectrometer, that was in 1998. Termination of plasma subsystem, that was 2007. Power off planetary radio astronomy experiment, that was 2008. Termination of scan platform of ultraviolet spectrometer, 2016. 2BD, start shutdown of science instruments. Uh, as of October 2010, the order's undecided. However, the low energy charged particles, cosmic array subsystem magnetometer, mm-hmm. and plasma wave subsystem instruments are expected to still be operating. TBD, termination of the data tape recorder. <laughs> Remember, there is a tape recorder on board this. Yep. Oh, wow. That's how old this is. Yep. There is literally this, the, this Voyager cassette tape. Uh, <laughs> unknown date, termination of the gyroscopic operations. Uh, unknown date. No, no ba- seriously, give me back that album. <laughs> that was a good album. Yeah. <laughs> 2025 to 2036, no longer be able to power even a single instrument. After 2036, both probes will be out of range of the deep space network. Uh, they launched 14 days from each other, and this is at a, and the reason they made two is you know for redundancy, which implies that they were not certain it was going to work out. But the fact that both worked and worked so spectacularly is, uh, my goodness, I, I I can't wait, I can't wait. You're saying you're saying they're going to build uh, uh, starships one a day? Bring it. That's yeah, a controversial you know. opinion. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah, but you know I'll what? take them all on, yeah. one by one. I'll stop punching into space. All y'all, just make it one big Carmen line. I'll take it yeah, all. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of amazing when you think about, yeah, that these are things that were made in 19, launched in 1977 or the early 1970s technology. I mean, that really is. I mean, well, you, you just you know, the lifetime achievement award for craftsmanship for anybody involved mm-hmm. in that project, right? Like, like that's that well, just it, gotta feel amazing because because if it if it if it turned into dust, you know, five minutes after it launched, it would it would be like, oh, huh, oh well, that's that's learning about space for you. I mean, but instead, it it just is dominated. That's amazing. Uh, like these engineers uh, are now, you know, they're aging out, and they're like, yeah, it's bittersweet mm-hmm. as I realize. Uh, 2024, we uh, turn off their phones. Uh, <laughs> 2026, they no longer are allowed to drive. They uh, they're already can't email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they don't know the difference between the Roku and Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2030, we glue their eyes shut. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just wow. in the list. It's, it's on the list. It's on the list. They put yeah. it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> they they listen to... Uh, 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 oh, never mind. Who do they listen to? I was going to get political. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They listen to the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> they listen to, <laughs> to Diamond and Silk. <laughs> what and Clover. are you? Let's go around the room here. What are we most looking forward to when it comes to space exploration? <sighs> um, it's uh, and and again, I lament the fact that it's the only thing I could think of, which is foundational science. It, that idea of a solar system-sized telescope just sounds delightful, but but. To be honest, it's going to be, oh, you know what? I'll say right now, I am here for the arguments about, like, there's already arguments when coordinated AI drone shows turn out to have commercial messages over cities. Uh, Once that stuff is off planet and out of the jurisdiction, and then you get some backyard uh, 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 dillweed pulling out a, a space laser shotgun saying, you know, give it, quit blinking them lights in the sky. I shot them down with my space laser in my backyard. Like, that's going to be amazing. So, wait, your number one thing you're looking for <laughs> is the argument. space exploration space is space graffiti yeah. and, and people- vigilante <laughs> violence against <laughs> space graffiti. I mean, uh, Yes, all of those, <laughs> and, and and a galaxy-wide telescope. Okay. Or just a solar system-wide telescope. 
Just the solar system. And uh, Amazon Prime uh, uh, delivery of a space laser that can shoot things from my backyard. Just in case. Just (laughs) in case. The only... All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I was going to say the only good guy with... Bad guy with a space laser, good guy with a space laser. Anyway, moving on. Uh... Oh, my favorite thing is is uh, the thing I'm most looking forward to is actually I think that there's going to be a tremendous narrative uh, uh, benefit to the human race as the Mars thing becomes not a philosophical uh, a desire, but rather a physical thing, and we are talking about humans that are that are that are uh, going to to begin uh, doing these these trips, and we begin following them. I think it will be almost immediately woven into our, our the, the kind of story of our species. But what I'm most excited for, and this is largely because I've spent so much time talking about this kind of stuff with Andrew, uh, is the more sort of uh, 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 industrialization of, of space that is closer to Earth. You know, the idea of, of, of asteroid mining and, and just all of a sudden the rules of uh, uh, the global economy sort of rewritten while this, you know, a, 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 a trillions and trillions of dollars in, in wealth is now accessible to people that, that want to go and, and try and grab it. And like the idea of blue collar space miners is something that is, is I, I think it, it's, it's hard to see from here to get to there, but that kind of societal change is uh, exciting to me. Unless it didn't, erupts in a civil war or something like that which is also possible uh i'm i'm very bearish though on like space mining myself because i I just you still have to and it might be we might find asteroids that are like just you know pure some super really great resource or whatever but still still the bottom from it's like literally in resource development that's like next to tourism like i'm um, I don't know that it'll really be. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe mining maybe mining is not necessarily what I'm going for. I mean, just uh, 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 an existence industrialization. Industrialization. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, the idea of carving out an asteroid and having uh, you know centripetal force give you some kind of gravity or whatever mm. uh, sounds so bonkers. And this is a dumb example, but hopefully enough people have been there to know what I'm talking about. You ever, if you've ever walked around the Venetian in Las Vegas long enough, it almost feels like them some blue skies over your head. And, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you don't feel like you're in a claustrophobic uh, air-conditioned box in the middle of a desert. That, it, that it's 2 miles. o'clock in the afternoon it, it, and not a pleasant uh, summer in Tuscany. Exactly. Oh, yeah, we, we've talked about before. One of the things that Mars and the moon have a lot of are caverns. Lava yeah, tubes. Lava tubes. Yeah, lava tubes and and huge ones, probably much bigger. There are probably lava tube systems bigger on Mars than exist on Earth, which will go for hundreds of miles. And if you start talking about like, oh, well, we'll wall off one part, wall off another part and create an ecosystem inside of there. Yeah, like why? Why the heck not? I I got a question that for some reason had never occurred to me till just now. One, One of the key elements of terraforming in Kim Stanley Robinson's trilogy about terraforming Mars is the idea that uh, to thicken up the atmosphere uh, just on an ongoing basis, they, they grab a comet, they mm-hmm. chuck it at Mars and it sort of, you know, it uh, uh, skips across the atmosphere, shedding a lot of its hydrogen and oxygen and, you know, creating atmospheric compounds and so on. Uh, that seems like once there are humans on Mars, even one tiny base, that gets real dangerous. And I was trying to think of like, how do you do the very first one of those? And then it occurred to me, here's my question. Do you think we're going to use Venus as like a target range just to practice up a bit? See, see how good we can get at chucking, chucking comets to uh, evaporate in the atmosphere? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that I would assume that the, the math of that's pretty precise and you have a lot of chance to error correct I, I i don't even know that we'll ever do that i have no idea that we'll even really try to terraform um the whole planet huh i'm all for it i just it's just by the time you know we get there and eventually everybody else gets there or they get there and then we get there and everybody else gets there it's going to be a lot of different parties on you know we're we're used to the science fiction trope of 
it's either, you know, oh, the Mars colony. Like, I don't know. I think there's going to be, like, the, the Olympus Mons group, and there's going to be these other groups, these other factions. We quickly are going to factionalize um, and probably have different, different ideas about what we want to do. Uh, I, I can't help but assume that it's much, much cheaper to just send, I don't know, 100 million probes all over Mars and then have everybody stay at home and put on an immersive enough virtual reality experience that it's as though you're on Mars. Like, why actually well, go? Well, we don't. One is we, we're not there yet with robotics. Like, even the head of, you know, the Mars Pathfinder mission will tell you that, you know, a one geologist could find in an afternoon what it takes Pathfinder to find in three months. So, you know, that's the state of robotics now and for the foreseeable future. And there's... You know, we are using, now we've, we switch to systems that are more autonomous so they can explore on their own. But you know, we send geologists to Antarctica. You know, we send geologists to the bottom of the ocean. We put people all over because there's something about being there and, and being able to make those decisions in real time and sort of seeing it with your own senses. So I think it'll be all the above. I think it's going to be people and bots, you know. I think that culturally is, again, what, what I'm, I'm most excited about is, is where is that dividing line? There will be people that want to go. Yeah. There will be people that want to go, uh, uh, you know, at, at early phases where things are a little bit more dicey than they, than they will be eventually. Like, because that is the spirit of humanity. It's exciting. So, somebody, somebody pointed out something here, which, which is a good point, but I have a thought on this. As they said, VR with a six to 44 minute round trip lag. Are you crazy? And like, yeah, like obviously like, you're not going to be doing, you know, real time Beat Saber on Mars with, you know, because of that lag. But when you think about, I started thinking about that idea of like one, that gravitational lens, and then the idea of when you start putting together really, really, really sophisticated sensing instruments and radio telescopes and all this other stuff, you could get so much data, such an incredible amount of data that you could do the kind of space exploration that Brian talks about, where it's like, all right, today, guys, we're going to. We're going to hop into, and there will be people in VR. Like, we have people right now who've been finding features on Mars and the moon, uh, even hobbyists who've done this because they just, there's so much more data than people can handle. AI is going to probably account for a lot of this, but it's still going to be an AI going, this is interesting. Do you want to take a look? And there may be the first human to ever go inside a Martian cave, maybe doing it via VR because a helicopter found this carbon, you know, this rile or this exposed, you know, lava tube and flew down through there. And somebody's going to give me the first experience this in VR and walk through there and look on the wall and see, are those shells? What is that? So and, I think it's all the above. Uh, and, and yes, that that is definitely, you know, six to 44 minute round trip lag is a concern. But so was 20 years ago, a one and a half second to two second lag while playing multiplayer deathmatch. And, you know, they basically they would do best guesses of, OK, if you're running in a straight line in this direction, you're probably going to go at least another second. And, and, you know, if you get tagged, we'll figure it out or whatever. Uh, uh, in a world where AI bots can model your expected behavior uh, very, very precisely, uh, maybe not 44 minutes, but six minutes, like, like if you're walking, if your robot avatar is walking along and sees the type of cave that the AI knows you're going to immediately walk towards then you know it's just gonna do that well yeah and it, you could just be it's just 45 minutes or however like ahead of you further down the cave and you're the first person to could experience it so as the probes are flying through there you're walking along and making that so i think there's gonna be it could be a lot of different a lot of different ways that we could explore it so i excited about all of it mm -hmm. yeah and let's do I had one more thought, but I just escaped here. Probably put it away. Uh, we have picks. I got picks. David McRaney has a podcast called You Are Not So Smart. He's got a book coming out. He sent me some copies. I'm midway through it. How Minds Change. Mm -hmm. Get on that pre-sale list. Everyone knows pre-ordering. That's 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 the future. That's the that's the real future. Um, Really, really enjoying it. It's uh, it, it it it's imbued with a little bit more of his honest upbringing in Mississippi and uh, dealing with the cultural biases that he encountered and uh, how he became fixated on 
the, uh, uh, the you know the wonderful flawed wetware that we're all made out of. Um, it's great. Uh, I believe it comes out tomorrow, according to this. Yes. So go 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 pre-order uh, 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 as we have uh, talked about on this show. Uh, pre-ordering is really 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 helpful not only for his publisher, but also making lists and everything. So go and do that. And if you want to hear okay. David McRaney talk to me, you can listen to it on Friday's episode of the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast, where uh, we went over how politicians, specifically in the realm of persuasion, have uh, uh, been practicing an art ahead of, of uh, the, the, the sociological research on this. Uh, also, uh, you know, uh, audio book it's, it's, is read by him on Audible as well. It says editor's pick, by the way, too, if you look at that. Oh, right on. Yeah, so I compliments to him. Although I thought uh, writing a book about We're Not So Smart and writing a letter to you, Brian, saying, hey, dummy, was a little bit. Mm, little, uh, little look, man, we all have our own love language. <laughs> okay. <right. laughs> Turns out I love being called a dummy. <laughs> that's that's actually way too close because that's how I fell in love with, with everyone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, I got a bit. I, I I continue to watch Stranger Things. I continue to like it, but uh, oh boy, these uh last two episodes that I've that I've watched, uh, they sure tapped the brakes on that plot momentum. Boy, was there a lot of plot momentum, a lot of things happening, and then, ooh, oh, I I, I get it. Then it man. went even faster. No, no, a lot of what, light speed. A lot of like faster, we're we're well aware of uncomfortably these fast. things that have happened, and we know that these things are almost certainly gonna happen. But boy, are they luxuriating in the uh, the. Are you sure you weren't watching season three of Barry? I'm pretty are, positive. Are you sure? Are you, are you inclined to do a little bit of channel hopping? When you watch this, <laughs> you feel like you've been on this channel too long, and it's just yeah. Uh, uh, I, I still like it. I still like it. This is not me. Yeah. This is not me running it down. Uh, uh, this is just, uh, boy, when that when that show is going, it feels very different than when that show is sitting. And there is, <laughs> and especially with some of these episodes <laughs> that are long, like like we got, I shut it uh, uh, the the second to last episode of the season off uh, because I was like, ah, let me just see how long it is. I'm getting a little tired, but. Let me just see. 30 minutes left. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to sleep. I'm not, I'm, uh, 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 without, without spoiling things. We, I know what's going to happen. We all know what's going to happen. Get back to the crazy ghost man doing crazy ghost man stuff. <laughs> We're here to stop the crazy ghost man. There's a crazy ghost man and he has crazy ghost powers and, and everyone's going crazy and they're trying to find who he is. Do that. Do that. We know that the, everything else is like skip like, to the working overtime part. Let's just I mean what because they because they were they were going so fast toward it. Sure. And then it was just like, all right, let's put a pause because we have to get two characters who aren't physically in this location back to this location for a final And Everybody's doing thing. kind of fine without them, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> they're doing they're doing great. And every once in a while they say, Where's Poochie? And then we have to cut to another <laughs> like, 30 minute Poochie uh, uh thing where it's like, oh, oh I wonder if Poochie's gonna get home. Uh, like, yes, yes, ding dong. Of course he's gonna Blade get Runner home. 2049. It's a great movie until the old guy showed up oh <laughs> anyway i like it i like it but just get you like it crazy ghost man crazy. i want i want it's more good. the more the it's closer still... they are to the crazy ghost man the happier i am i i listen man uh just go back and forth between that and some other big science fiction franchise property that's so bad. I I I, I stopped watching. I stopped watching. Uh uh uh. Um, you you oh. Moon Knight in it? <laughs> no, I well, I didn't even begin Moon Knight. We haven't even oh, began. Yeah, yeah. We haven't even begun Moon Knight. Uh uh. But uh, uh no. We, I what's what's the other one? Is it Obi Wan? Yeah. Is it? Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Right. It, it, or, it, it's not which one, Brian. <laughs> it's which one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Obi. Uh, Obi Wan. <laughs> hey man, isn't isn't the boys great? The boys is great. I, oh my god! I've, I've yet, oh yeah, I, I've not texted Andrew. But Andrew was texting me about the boys, and I've yet, I've yet <laughs> to text him because I need to watch the episode. 
There is, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Paul Reiser gets probably yes. the greatest line ever. Yes, <laughs> butter churned half the cast of Falcons, Chris, which oh. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you ask Army Archer, he said, "Let you <laughs> let it just, 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 just." So good. It's so good. Uh, uh, oh. That show is so good. Yeah. Wait, you'll, you'll Paul Reiser's in both of these shows? No, it's yes. someone. Wait. Yes. Oh, so yes. So Paul Reiser's yes. in The Boys and Paul Reiser is in Stranger Things. Oh, fine. Yes. I amazing. didn't know that. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. That's great. <laughs> oh. I'm mad about him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a quick pick today. <laughs> uh, I, I've really been enjoying uh, a little game called Mini Motorways. Um, as this is on the Apple Arcade and it's on a bunch of other stuff now. Uh, it's great. It's from the guys who made Mini Metro. Uh, if you like that, and it's, it's a very cool, a very easy sort of mix between a city building game and a puzzle game. And I, also, uh, I just uh, like watching I, people. I, play I, it. I really, really that was a really good pick uh, last time, uh, and and uh, it it was I got too close to the sun, and I started to get angry, mm -hmm. and I set it down. It, it's is this, very is the same thing going to happen on this with uh, uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, honestly, maybe, okay. you know, I, I go kind of back and forth. I like watching people play it on YouTube because they show you watch their strategies and the things that they do. And then every so often I go and I'll just go play it like because it's on the iPad and I can yeah. just. Blah, 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 blah. And so it's kind of that nice sort of freeing sort of experience. You don't need to sit down and watch all of the cut scenes and get strapped in and find out who the maidens are and whatever. You could just. Play the mini motorway game. Well, right I, I I I look forward to mini motorways, but I hope it makes me feel the same way I did with the uh, uh what was the first one? Mini metro. Mini metro. Um, the subway uh, game. Ooh, people, they need to die. They don't <laughs> they don't load in fast enough. No, they don't no. move fast enough. Mini <laughs> the nice thing about mini motorway because mini metro is very is older has been around for a long time. Mini motorways is newer, so it feels a little better. Yeah, <laughs> it feels a little better. Okay, so, I'm in. Mini Motorways. And it's on Apple Arcade. It's been on Apple Arcade for a while, but now it's coming on a PC, so it's got updates and stuff. So check it out. Andrew? So I'm going to pick up a pick that I've made before. Um, I would say this week's episode was probably I mean, one of the weakest ones for me, and the villain ended up being so cartoony. It was sort of silly, but I still enjoyed the episode because I really liked the characters. Hmm. And that is still Star Trek Strange New World. Um... I think that uh, kind of standout, Anson Mount's great in it. I like all the cast. I really like uh, Ethan Peck, who plays Spock now. Uh, it's his own take on Spock. I think he does a really good job of it. Ethan Peck, by the way, that nobody will let you forget, he is the grandson of Gregory Peck. Mm. That's actually his middle name, is Ethan Gregory Peck. I think he is Spock. First, you have to go like, well, it's Leonard Nimoy to find that role. And anybody to go in there, it is so hard. It's hard to have anybody else play that role, although several people have. I find that... I really like Ethan Peck's, you know, portrayal of him, and uh, the show has been fun. It's just episodic Star Trek. So, if none of you have watched Strange New World yet, uh, no, I I almost did, and weirdly, um, when I when I watched the preview, I was disappointed that it was less cheesy than I wanted it to be, and and so I paused just long enough. But I've heard nothing but universal acclaim for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you'll. Don't worry, it'll be cheesy. Okay. Um, it's it's a. Uh, <laughs> it'll it'll it'll. It, there's it'll, fun. There's, there's, there's some heavy cheese. Up. Your 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 recommended daily amount of of queso. Yeah, you'll get some curds. <laughs> yeah, I I it, it is. There are some shows like I think it's I think it's entirely possible to make things that people really like. I think even when people talk about this age of like, oh, it's hard to meet expectations. And I think that you have to understand what expectations are. It aren't they aren't necessarily. Well, I have to see this character and that character. There is fan board expectations, which are going to be dumb and based upon the opinions of people that really haven't thought really highly about why they like a thing, versus you know, Top Gun Maverick, like a movie that in concept you'd be like, this sounds like the dumbest Hollywood idea for a movie ever. Come on, really, we're going to revisit that. And it knew what it was. Acknowledge it in Top Gun Maverick. It's a movie i mean yeah you, know, you, don't, you don't have to call it great you can still have to admit it's really fun everybody that i know really dug it and there, there, there's strange. something something to be said about especially in the genre world uh competence knowing what you're doing doing it confidently uh, uh but competently and, and not trying to reinvent the wheel uh and, and letting letting especially with genre stuff 
the inherent uh, uh, fascination with it sort of sing. You know, The Boys, that's a show that's just so... <laughs> I just... There are things we need to talk about, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> The, the 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 certain character is like so is like somebody just listened to a weird things episode and decided to come up with a fevered dream of what would a superhero <laughs> be obsessed with. Well, we saw that with the Crimson Countess before, where she's writing the songs about the chimpanzee rescue. Yes, yes. And so, uh, it's just her. If she only gets just watch. What are you doing? Again. Don't spoil it. Come yeah. on, who are you? Don't spoil it. <laughs> No, I'm not yeah. the spoiler guy. No, we will, we will, we will, we will get to it. Ashley and I will, yeah. uh, we, we will, we will get to it. But, but uh, so far, God, the boys is just, it, it's, it's one of those things where, like, even if sometimes you're like, oh, this is the ultraviolet scene because it's a boys episode right. and there's going to be the ultraviolet scene. But even then, it's just like maybe it's, it's just because, and I will say this, better that it's coming out one episode at a time i feel like if i were binging it i i might feel like oh geez man i was five it was 45 minutes ago i just saw somebody's you know a, a finger explode so right. much that it blew off everybody else's eyeballs or something right. like that uh, uh but but uh, i just i don't know it always just gives me a little bit of mm, mm, oh yes the boys it is always well, there that, yeah that opener uh Oh man! Like if I I wanted to be in the pitch meeting for that. Um, I mean, to to be honest, the opener was kind of like, uh, wait, am I over the boys? And then luckily, very quickly, the, the, there well, was I mean, yeah, not the not the dawn of the seven, but the the first right. yes. grotesque thing. Yeah, that yeah correct. No, I think that, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's what, exactly that's what Brian. What I'm yeah, that's what Brian yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I think I think yeah, and also narratively, it needed to be something familiar because you're going to see what is different and what has changed about oh. all of our characters oh i know my other pick i'm oh. gonna join miss marvel oh i've heard good things delightful delightful it's just it's a delightful show uh the lead actress uh aman Vellani, she's fantastic i think she is of if we're in phase four or whatever phase we're in best discovery best best thing that we found in this phase you know she's, she's been just... all over they really have a lot of faith in her uh in terms of of putting her in front of the camera and doing a lot of press but she uh, uh has been just a delight apparently uh you know she's very um <laughs> she she is in direct communication with kevin feige will pepper kevin feige for spoilers or argue with him about the canon <laughs> of the universe uh, and then was I forget what she was watching. I think it was WandaVision when they were shooting. WandaVision was airing while they were shooting Miss Marvel and got yelled at by Kevin Feige for watching it on a phone. Ha! <laughs> She's like, stop watching it on a phone. It's meant to be watched on a TV. <laughs> we, we put a television in the logo. She, she is... Uh, but she seems delightful. Yeah, and she is... Uh, there, if you, when you see the sort of the package, the backstory on her... She was a huge Miss Marvel fan, and there's a photo of her in her homemade Miss Marvel costume, which had the you know the lightning, and she's like, ah, and people thought I was the Flash, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's just it is neat to see a fan like that to do that. I think that uh, you know bringing hey doing hey we're gonna do a Muslim superhero is you know, uh, a big choice for them to do, and I think the way they pulled that off is is really well. Is you it it makes makes it seem less alien to audiences that aren't familiar with that, those, the culture. And you realize, oh, they have, they're having their church politics and all this other stuff like everybody else and this and that and her family. Like, it's just, it's so relatable and just, I think, so well done. Awesome. Gentlemen. It's been weird. Hey, there we go. All right, we're going to take a minute, take a break, and do some after things Ooh, in just a moment. You go ahead. But we'll get started in just a few minutes. Give everybody hey a chance boys, to go to the bathroom. Hey boys, go ahead. Hello, hey Justin. Bryce will hold it down. We're simply going to hold it down, we're my man. We're simply holding it right down, down to the ground. That's, That's how far right. we'll hold it down. All the way to the ground. All the way to the ground. <sighs> Bryce, let me just say. Yeah. Uh, 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 pursuant to other conversations that we have had, okay. Uh, uh, I want unlimited Bryce compliments in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
I went, oh, I definitely thought 100%, about pursuing comments. 100% Bryce. Whenever I have a very funny joke, Bryce saying, that was a good joke. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> More, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, uh, 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 I got some new sunglasses. Over the Shoot. Weekend. I need new sunglasses. Those got, look good. These are these are all right. These are these are what are they? Foster Grant or something? There. They were they were pretty inexpensive on Amazon.com. Uh, you know, here's so here's the thing. Because there's there's I, either expensive glass yes. sunglasses or a very fucking expensive sunglasses. So here's the thing. I was in when we were in Mexico City a couple months ago. I went and uh, uh, we were in this nice little neighborhood, and then all of a sudden there's this cool sunglasses shop, and I'm like, oh, these glasses look kind of cool. Yeah. And we're in Mexico, so it's a little bit cheaper than than it would be otherwise. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh, let me buy. It. it turns out they're one of them cool glasses that uh, you can take the shades off. Oh, clip ons, clip ons. And then it, yeah. So it, so that. And I was like, ah, you want to know what? I'm getting to the point where I need to go to an optometrist and actually get glasses. Yeah. Uh, so cool. I'll, I'll get the, I'll get my prescription things put in there, and then I'll have these things. Immediate lost them like within five seconds. Oh, like, no. like it's the only time I've ever spent mm. money on sunglasses. Other than that, I buy all my sunglasses at gas stations exclusively. How, how expensive did they end up being? Were they were they, they were pretty like, pricey? Yeah, they um, were they were they were edging toward the the, the triple digit yeah. range. Uh, yeah, and, and, like, and I, I lost them immediately. And I'm like, you want to know what? And, and like. All the only glasses I wear are, are like swag bag sunglasses uh, uh, or stuff I get at at gas stations. People compliment me on them, so it's like I do not need to be buying expensive ones, but I think I do need new ones because I'm yeah. losing all of them. I lose them constantly. Yeah, that was the thing for me. Like I've I've got a bunch of pairs, but um, because I got a bunch of them at once because they were cheap, they've all got scratches or they're lost or I throw you. Know, eh, eh, they could just be over here for for however long. And so I ended up asking, and then I got, I got, I ended up getting some new ones that I'll kind of treat with a, <laughs> a little more reverence. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, but but it was either these or like you look for like Ray Bans, and they're like over a hundred bucks. These like, well, Ray Bans. They look good, don't they? They look good, fam. They do simply look good. Uh, do you need a break, Justin? No. No. Okay. Nah. Um. Alrighty. Welcome back, Brian and Andrew. Ready. Uh. Okay. I am actually not just ready yet. Uh, up, up, uh, me, 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 me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then uh, I guess that will get me ready here. All right. Uh, you guys are just some after things? Mm-hmm. All right. Good to go. Andrew, I'll count you in for some after things then. In three... Two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy. Justin Robert Young. Hey. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey. Gentlemen, I want to talk a bit about systems, bookmarks, things like this. How do you keep track of all the little things in your life? I send myself emails. <laughs> Because, oh, yeah. because I can always search through all of Gmail's history. And I, I, I'll send myself a picture through uh, Gmail, and I'll write descriptive words that I think future me will search for. I, I think that's a great system. I think that part of what I love, and you've mentioned this before, part of what I love about that is that things will, people will, new apps show up and be like, oh, I use this system, I use that. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I can rely on it. I'm like, oh, it's all on my computer. I'm like, well, I'm on my iPad or my phone. or I kind of like, I don't have a problem with the cloud. I just don't want to buy a cloud server and somebody's just going to go up and vanish in the middle of the night. But what your system is like, yeah, it's Gmail. I'm, I'm That's- astonished at how often I'll find myself doing stuff like, um, uh, well, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 for example, playing around with Dolly or whatever, uh, I'll, I'll, do it on my cell phone. I'll take a screen grab because the resolution quality of that screen grab is quite good. Then I'll edit it down so you don't see the web page part of things. Then I'll send myself the picture, and then I'll on the on the PC, mm-hmm. copy paste, plug it into the Mailchimp doc that I'm assembling. Because I you know I don't want to assemble a doc or a a letter in uh, uh, Mailchimp. By the way, I'm not emailing images of Dolly on Mailchimp, but that is an example of a type of thing 
that I, that I would do because I would know uh, that it's traceable throughout everything and I'll always be able to find it. You know, you can download the image on your phone, right? Uh, yes, yes, okay. yeah. yes. The pro tip is you hit view instead of download and then you hold to add to photos and then you don't have to crop. Ooh. Yeah, but you have to hit download first. Yeah. Uh, for, for, I've talked a lot about the Things app uh, and that uh, the part of the reason that I've been really drawn to it is because it gives me both things. It can either be a planner or it can be, hey, I need to remember this thing. And so a lot of times when people <laughs> tell me something's going to happen, I'll put it in there and I know I can set it for the date. I can put the time and notes and stuff in there. And then it's all inside my thing. I mean, uh, Brian, would it be fair to say you use your email a lot? Yes. Well, I, I use the Things app a lot. So, you know, a lot a lot of apps have got productivity stuff in, built in them. Uh, so, you know, try not to try to try to work where you are instead of somewhere new. I will also say Brian's email. I'll walk in and Brian will have his email open and it is as confusing to me as the uh, uh, stock traders on the <laughs> Wall Street floor and their terminals. Like it's just a bunch of. There's eight text. panels. There's a bunch of things. I don't know what's happening. All, all I know is Brian's email is the busiest thing. There are there are establishing shots in the Star Wars prequels <laughs> that are, are are less busy than Brian's email. Uh, I'll not deny it. <laughs> uh, I go ahead. Go ahead, Prince. Oh no, no, please. You do the whiteboard, don't you, Justin? I need. Uh, I've, uh -oh. I've gone. Bro, I've. I've. I've Bring I've, back the ghost, crazy man. <laughs> get, get the crazy ghost man out of here. He's ruining that town. <laughs> he got the police all mixed up, and these kids are going nuts. And there's a new character who I like that's involved in it. Is this also Obi Wan? <laughs> crazy ghost man. What are you thinking? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I need to get my religion back on the the whiteboard. Uh, oh. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 the what the way that I used to do things was to have a a to do list, and then I would lay out my calendar for the day. So I would have like a little to do list on the side, and then every day I would look at my gcal and then physically write it out on my board. And that would be that. Problem is, is that I was doing that during lockdown when I was spending all of my time in my house. When you are away from the house, I need to start doing it just so I can familiarize myself with my schedule first thing in the morning. Uh, and I need to be better about my, 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 my to-dos. But that is a, a system where it's easy for it to break down when you are living hand to mouth. And that's what I kind of found uh, uh, was not every once in a while you got to do it because you're so busy that that you're just trying to keep your head above water. And we've had a few of those times recently with World's Greatest Con, either in production or launching. It's just you you kind of know like all right, it's time to make the donuts every day. Either I'm researching or I'm writing or I'm editing or blah 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 blah. But now I I haven't reestablished those habits. But 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 that is something for me that I find very, very important. Uh, and then also just taking notes. Uh, I'll just use my uh, uh, iPhone notes app. And uh, uh, I've, I found it helpful for sharing time coded notes on projects and stuff like that. I'll just email either a screenshot or the, uh, the, the, the doc itself if they've got an iPhone. Mm. Oh yeah. Cause notes is basically like Google docs. Yeah, it, no, yeah, it, it's it's, it's like really that. it's really rich um, in terms of uh, in terms of, of 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 what it does. I'm sure that I could probably have something a little more intuitive for exactly what I want to do. Like, I'm sure that there's probably some, you know, even even through Dropbox and an easy way, which is normally where I listen to stuff. But that's not really built for it either, especially on mobile. What about you, Andrew? I notes tends up being. Pocket and notes tend to be the thing where I do most of my stuff um, because I do a lot of things with code and particularly a lot with language models and I have to remember prompts. I use text, text uh, the, the text edit for the built-in Mac app and then save it to the cloud so it's available on all my computers. I do that a lot. I still struggle. Um, you know, I, was, I went through this thing the other day where 
I've been, you know, interested in, you know, spaced repetition and stuff because there's a lot of things that I want to remember, like, you know, like a name of somebody like, oh, I, you know, this is somebody I, you know, an attorney I use, but I never maybe only need them like once every five years. And like, there's a lot of little things I'd love to be able to remember. And I was looking at these different apps for doing this stuff. And I'm like, man, like, I don't trust any of these things here. Like, I want, I don't want to put everything inside of something that I don't know that I can get out or it would be stuck there forever. And then I was thinking about two, I don't know, I went into this whole side thing, like, I'm like, I'm sure somebody's done this before because it sounds familiar, but what I would love, I would love an email app that behaved exactly like a messaging app. Hmm. Because. So you would, you would have communications with your regular people as opposed to everything showing up as its own message? Well, it could, it could function exactly like iMessage, you know, yeah. but you just use email. It's like literally, because I was thinking about there's a lot of, and Google's trying to get at that a little bit, their Gmail, the sort of the way the communications, but like the problem with iMessage or those systems is that uh, there's a cost. So if you wanted to build apps or services like that, it still costs you like two cents per thing. But I was thinking about like, man, like, because I went back, you know, two years ago when I first started working at the OpenAI's DALL-E, or excuse me, a GPT-3 rather, um, and... I built a system called AI Channels because I just love the idea of a bot that sits inside of a messaging system that can do things for you, which we see in Discord. That's a thing that I think is going to be very interesting is there's so much development. Discord's another one of these things where so much is happening in this space that it's invisible to, to the people that went and finally discovered podcasting, you know, with Serial. When yeah. they find out about Discord, it's going to be a big thing. And they're like, oh, wow, you have bots, you do all this sort of stuff because it's it's an, it, there's a huge part of how communications is happening, but it's completely under the radar of certain people. The normies. Follow? The yeah. normies, yeah. Yeah, and even the normies in tech, even people who cover this sort of stuff, they're aware of it, but they're not really paying attention to like the developments there, and even I would say even VCs and other people, because I could see like when you push Discord-like capabilities into a messaging app or something that's really robust and useful, it becomes incredibly powerful. Uh, you mentioned iMessage. Uh, there, there's a fair bit of note taking I do that way. Um, uh, for example, uh, part of the reason I justify not having a business card is if we're at an event and I, in my mind, think this is somebody worthy of exchanging contact info with, then I will get their information and I will write out a full block message. Hello, Andrew Maine. Uh, Brian Brushwood here. It was great to meet you at specific event. I loved talking about blank. If you need me, I'm Brian at uh, uh, And then I'll send that. And now that becomes searchable far down the road. Where it's like, oh, who is that, you know, attorney, novelist, uh, you yeah. know, and then, and then I, I know we met at Tam. Let me, and then usually I'm able to hunt it down that way. I, I've been playing with an idea of using, there's a thing called embedding search, which is where if you want to find things in a very fuzzy sort of way, embedding search can work really well. Because if you even say, ah, oh, the, the document that talks about Pluto and planets and music, and it could find that thing as vague as it is and even not using the right words, or somebody like this, this, and this. Embeddings are incredibly powerful. I, I, I could go on and on about them, but like they're, basically like these fuzzy sort of neurons of information about a topic, you know, and, and uh, I found a service that lets you basically build apps that work off of iMessage, not with internally, but literally will talk to iMessage and back and forth. And I thought about making a bot just for that, of just like an iMessage, just send things that I need to remember to it. And then later on, just cue it and say like, what was this or whatever, and have it respond to me. Uh, I've also discovered that even the Photos app, like uh, uh, on the iOS, uh, I'll find myself sometimes like snapping a photo or getting a short screen grab of something uh, for later use. Like, it's pretty good at actually reading all that text and being able to search for it now. Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. take a photo of your screen and years later type in the word that was on that screen and it'll find that picture for you. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. relatively new thing. I think from the past year, maybe the last update that they did. And it's cool. I like seeing there's a great photo of someone in a in a college classroom taking a photo of someone else's screen to steal their notes oh, as it turns into copyable text. Yeah, they've added some really cool ML stuff in the new coming out in the new iOS. Like one of them is um, background separation. So like you have pull up an image and you press down on the image of let's say there's a dog in a photo. You just put your finger on the dog 
and you now it will copy just the dog. Oh wow! And mm. that's a service like I have a I have an online server I use to do that to do background separation, and it's one of these things where people pay like fifteen cents, twenty cents per image to do this, and it's like you can literally. If you're technically inclined, it costs you $5 a month to run your own server to do it, but it's just, that's not most people. But Apple's now put that built into the iPhone. They finally added punctuation to text, uh, speech to text, which I actually trained a model that was able to run on an iPhone and do that, but I never did anything with it. So I'm glad that that's a feature now. But there's a lot of these little things we're putting in there, which are cool. So instead of saying, uh, 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 hi, Brian, period, uh, it'll just yep. be, uh, hi, Brian, uh, let's meet at uh, the restaurant, and it'll uh, do all the punctuation. Yeah, what Google was doing two years ago. No. Ba, ba, ba. Shots fired. <laughs> you brought this topic up. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. Listen, I have, a, I, have an, I have an iPhone. I'm a big iPhone fan, but I also have a Pixel because sometimes they do really cool stuff on there. Yeah. Although I bought this because, like, oh, they had their whole their tensor processing unit, their big, you know, AI engine on it. And then somebody did side-by-sides between that and the iPhone, and the iPhone just completely clocked it away. They're oh, like, this is oh, complete. No. Yeah, it was like complete Google, you Marketing. know. Yeah. But uh, I'm always like, I always like it, but I do, I was thinking about putting something like just building an app that would work with iMessages because I'm always in iMessages and the idea of just to say, hey, remember this, then come back later and say, what was this? And say, oh, it was this. I, I, I didn't want to share this, but it is astonishing what I'll do is if I'm driving, I'll, I'll activate Siri and I'll say, remind me in uh, four hours to do the blah, 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 blah. And, and then it'll clearly be wrong and I'll realize there's no way I'll know what that means in four hours. And then I'll immediately say, remind me in four hours and one minute to do what I mean is blah, 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 blah. And then I'll clarify again, remind me in four hours and three minutes. Oh my God. And then in the future, I'll get that message. I'll be like, oh yeah, that was, what did I mean by that? And then one minute later, it's like, by which I mean. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, pass me, give it to me. And then finally I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I got to call that guy. That's <laughs> hilarious. Seems very dysfunctional. <laughs> now playing the Beatles. <laughs> so anyhow, interesting strategies. I think that, you know, it's a slow thing of progressing towards what works for you. I have friends that are just Die hard Obsidian users. They absolutely love Obsidian. Uh, I'm not but familiar I, with that one. Uh, remind me. Obsidian is, it's part of the whole like second brain sort of idea. It's basically you put your notes, put everything else inside of there. And then there's a lot of like little apps and things you can put on top of it and pl uh, plugins. Huh. So basically keeps track of, you know, notes, etc. They do like the graph view, which I always think is kind of like really just purely eye candy and not something functional, but I could be wrong, but People love this thing. It is like a cult. You know, there's Rome Research, Obsidian, um, and they all have little things you can plug in. Like, I have a friend that uses Obsidian, then with a plug-in, so when he writes it, will help him, you know, find stuff autocomplete from things he's written before. So, huh. it's all heading towards somewhere. I think that, like, a couple years from now, there's going to be, either these features are going to be built into things like Notes and Google Docs, or they're going to be, we're going to finally come on that train. And there's definitely uh, a continued need for something like this to store, to process, and, and manage, you know, your own data, your own life data. Um, you know, it was like, a, it probably still is kind of a meme on TikTok of like people using Notion and using Notion and turning it into their journal or their wiki or whatever the thing that they want it to be. Uh, so there's definitely a need for, uh, I don't know. Uh, integrating your yeah. data, integrating your digital life and your physical life. So I don't know if you saw this too, like big update to what happened to Google Docs. Have you seen this? Mm -mm. Do you, you mean missed? that they the 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 keyboard shortcut that they finally added? Uh, no, I was talking about that. What were you talking about? Oh, uh, finally, you can control C and control V in Google Drive and Google Docs. Oh, you can yeah. copy and paste that's, links. That's... Oh, that's wild. End of end of uh, new feature. <laughs> No, no. Um, I'm hmm. talking about the idea that they, very early on, it was interesting because I've talked about this before. I'm like, what file format is a Google Doc? Right. Right. It's not. Good question. There is it, it, yeah. Right. Uh, and, or, or, or not until you download it, at which point it says, oh, a frozen in time document. I see. What flavor would you like? So if you go to Google Docs now and you open it up, there is 
in option one, they've, they've built in summarization, which I think is really cool. Like it'll summarize your stuff. It'll create that in the sidebar. But they've also added, and I'm trying to figure out um, if you do the, you can do a view. There's a view, and gosh, where did it go? <laughs> Google Docs, wonderful. <laughs> it allows you to just uh, get rid of the page. Get rid, get rid of, of the what? Basically what it does, it just goes full. It's not like eight and a half by 11. Oh, um, so you can actually just go actual full screen and, and write. Oh, I see. The pageless yeah. format, file page setup. It allows you to use wide images and tables. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Full, full um, sort how of, did you yeah. find that? Because yeah. I'm in there and I didn't see it. Uh, I opened yeah, the doc it, 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 and it, 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 it just, it just, just clippy. Oh, yeah. And now yeah, it went away on me. Uh, but Sorry. it's under file page setup. Okay, interesting. Pageless, yeah. Yeah, I don't know that my brain is ready to handle that possibility. You're not ready to go full mainline Google Docs? I, I, I want a big old fat barrier, and I want to know where me and the horizon end. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the advantage to this is in a electronic document, what is a page? Right. Sure. And how many times do I like, oh, I'll just do an extra carriage return so this thing starts on the next line, you know, over the break. When that's the thing I thought, thought about Google Docs, like, ah, it's the document in the future. Ah, but it's still eight and a half by 11 as pages and gutters and all this. Like, yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. And eventually mm. we're just going to print it out mm. on an inkjet printer anyway. So, yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it'll be algae. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that'll be the next, the next revolution is turning algae into printer ink. Algae, bend their algae into plowshares. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Gentlemen, do we have picks? No. <laughs> yes, it's both algae. Glad I said something so stupid and ended the podcast. <laughs> what is it? That's stupid. Yeah. Algae and plowshares. <laughs> yeah. We got a show title. <laughs> not a dad joke. because No, dad. no. It's just, a, it's stupid. It's just a dumb thing to say. It's just, it's just really stupid. It's a real, really... Uh, it just ends hey, up being an stupid. Or... I call brand. There we go. On brand. The boys. It's great. Watch the boys. Uh, yeah, a physical whiteboard. Uh, I, I, I very much believe in the idea of physically emptying out your brain and codifying it uh, uh, instead of just looking at everything on a screen. For me, it has been greatly helpful in terms of making things a little bit more real. Uh, uh, I have a problem of overstacking my schedule and uh, being surprised by the day. Uh, so I, uh, uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it my, my, my claim right now, even if I have to adjust when I wake up in the morning. Hmm. I am for the next week and, and hopefully the uh, uh, all buy after. A, buy I'm going to write out my schedule. Every day. I'm gonna, uh, one whiteboard a day <laughs> uh, uh, built in South Texas, and I'm just going to throw them into space. You know, Boeing can make 2.2 .2 a day, so. Well, just, uh, good for them. <laughs> Where do they do a podcast with them, Bryce? What do they use to design them? Yeah. <laughs> Other planes? Uh, uh, now I'm going to throw these these whiteboards harder in this space. <laughs> no! It's because of you. Anyway, so writing writing down your your thing. Uh, if, if, I, I found it extraordinarily helpful. Yeah. Writing things down, everybody. You heard it here first yeah, from Justin heard R. It. Young. Everybody's riding around in their hover cars with their beep bop robots. Not me. It's just the uh, old long form gerbs. <laughs> Right now, I, I, I hate short form gerbs. Ah, short form gerbs oh, is always shortening things. And it did the other thing. A hole. My guy's observation was like, I think about this a lot. If I had to use a typewriter to write, there would be no books, there would be no emails, there'd be nothing. <laughs> and all turned black on that day. Yeah. <laughs> The sun just, went out, the stars wept, for there were no more stories. It's been after. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know uh, if everything I get you to said got garbled for me. Oh, uh, it was all garbled. So was I, sure. uh, I was doing like a. Oh, I was yeah. doing like a cosmic heat death of the universe thing, and then the pause got so long. So, and yeah. I got it, and it was it sounded like it came from it the edge of the good. universe. Yeah, <laughs> there so. we go. Cool. Cool. 
Cool. All right, y'all. Yeah. Later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's been after this. After (laughs) After these messages. Let there be lights. (laughs) Justin, watch the boys. I'm watching it. I'm watching here. (laughs) All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here for the Weird Things and After Things program. We are going to go offline for the rest of the day. Yeah, you already, already did court killers. We already did court killers. Already did court killers. You need you need nothing. That's right. Uh, exactly. Turn your mic on. <laughs> yeah, turn your mic on if you want to talk. Okay, okay. he does it. Bye, everybody. He's done. That's it. <laughs>